Hi, it's Sandy Parker, and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Today, we're going to be working on a project that involves masking, and it's going to also involve some three dimension, and uh, the card that I made first, and I hope you can see that, you can see the three dimension on it, is uh, some s snowmen, and um, I put a little tree skirt around the tree with some presents. I'm not going to get it that involved with uh, the one we're going to be doing, but I just wanted to show you that this is kind of the idea of what we're going for. We're going to start with some paper that is from Michaels. It was a special that they had on their Christmas paper. It's a $2 pack. Recollections Christmas Noel pack is the one we're going to be using. And we're going to be using a set from Stampin' Up! Thanks so much. It's also a retired set and it involves a lot of snowmen, obviously. So what I've done so far is I've created an A2 size card base and then I put a black uh, piece of cardstock on top of that and then we're going to work on the white and I'll put all the dimensions of the paper below in the comments as I always do. We're going to start out by stamping on this the archival black ink from Stampin' Up. I like their new archival black ink. It is, it's a pretty, it's a pretty black ink, but it, more importantly, it is archival, and it, wherever you put it, baby, it's gonna stay there forever. I've had so, so much ink on me that I just can't even begin to tell you how uh, how I don't think I'll ever get it off. The wreath we're going to do in marker and it's going to be always artichoke and real red for the bow. Um, if you've never seen this done, all you do is you turn your marker on its side and you make sure you don't use the top of your marker, the point, because you don't want to ruin your point. And then you just go around the edges of your wreath really fast. This is why I am the messiest stamper. I should, that should be my name, messiest stamper on the net. You look how much ink I already have on me and I only have done this. If you think you got some of the green on your tip of your marker brush just um, do what I just did and wipe it off. And I'm going to use the Stampamajig in a second but right now I'm going to put him down right there. I wanted to do a technique on masking because it's one of those things that people talk about all the time on the net but if you're not a crafter you don't really for sure know what it is and this is another tool my sister said I don't know what you're talking about when you you didn't even mention this this is a stamp -a jig what it does is when you put your stamp in place you put the stamp -a jig there and then when you lift up, let's say that my stamped image wasn't perfect. Because I left that there, I could reposition the stamp exactly in the same spot, push it down again, and be able to get the image to come out. And if it didn't come out that time, I could re-ink and over and over again. But the point of this is that it holds your stamp in place so you can re-stamp in the same spot. That was for you, Kathy. My sister said that that was not self-explanatory. So I wanted to make sure everybody understood what that was. And then we're going to put the other snowman. Hopefully we have enough room for him. You know what? I'm going to put my mask on. Okay. Let's talk about masks. What you do when you create a mask is you put, you cut out your image. And in this case, I didn't think I needed to worry about my little bow, um, the, the strings of my bow hanging off. And what I did is I used a piece of, you can use any kind of paper, but in this case I did use a post-it note. So the sticky part of the post-it note is up here at the top. The image, all I did was I stamped the image on the post-it note, and then I just cut around the image. So now you have something that is going to protect the underneath image from anything on top of it. So if I want to stamp and make something look like it's it's standing in front of the wreath and blocking the wreath, that's how, that's kind of the point of this is that the wreath is protected from whatever you're stamping. Now, his um, arm continued onto the wreath, but when you pick up, you can see his arm is no longer touching the wreath. Kind of a cool component of this, I believe. So once you make any masks, stick them into whatever stamp set you have because you're going to want to be able to use them for anything going further. Um, you know, like in any project you're doing, and in this case, 
another thing we're going to be using is a little ball. I wanted to have um, a little, I wanted my snowman to be holding on to a ball, but I wanted to make sure too that if I wanted to stamp around that ball, and I'm going to be doing that, that the ball, now the ball is safe. I have, I do have a mask for the ball. I also have a ball, or excuse me, a mask for a stocking, and I wasn't exactly sure where I wanted to put the stocking. I guess I'm going to just let it go for now, and we'll think about it later. But the reason that I have the masks that I have is because I'm going to put snow in the background, and uh, I'll show you how you do that with your mask. I'm going to use a light blue ink. I think, I'm, I'm, I might change that up. I think I'm going to use my metallic blue inks that I created, those little blue ones. This is Stormy Sky. This is from the Tim Holtz line. Um, it's a distress ink. The, prob the only problem I found with, uh, the, with my little anchors is that I can't keep the lids on them really well. So I've taken to putting a little bit of painter's tape on it and that works fine. And then what I'm doing is this is a set of, of little snowflakes. And we're going to put them pretty much all over our page. But I want to make sure that if I get anywhere near an image that I put the mask for that image on it. And I don't really, probably don't really need to re-ink this because that... Um, is really really juicy. The other thing you want to do is when you get to the edge and you don't want like I don't want to I don't want to have my black paper sorry I don't want to get anything on my black so I'm going to just slide my black right up to the edge. All you want to do is make sure that if you're doing anything around your uh, your um, masks area that you just hold your mask in place don't let your mask go anywhere and then you also want to rotate your stamp so that you don't have the same images you know, like going across your page. You want to make sure that your images move with your page. On this side we're going to do a little bit more. I'm not putting any sentiment on the front of our card. Our sentiment is only going to be on the inside this time. Of course I could always change my mind. Okay. Because I masked <clears throat> my entire wreath, I do want to put one little section in there of, maybe one more little section of some snow inside my wreath. Because it would be getting some snow in there. And that is our wreath. I, I did do <clears throat> a lot of three dimension on the other one. What I think I'm going to do on this one, rather than do the three dimension, is I think I'm just going to do some watercoloring and some uh, Pico. This is Pico Irresistible. It makes a really black shiny image and I like his hat to be black and shiny and uh, we'll just color as we go and hopefully we'll be able to get this done relatively quickly. I wanted to make sure that we did some watercoloring because I hadn't watercolored for a while and I like to watercolor when I'm when I'm doing Christmas cards especially because I think people really appreciate the thought that you put into it and the fact that <clears throat> excuse me uh, I think people really appreciate it when they when they realize that you've gone to the trouble of, of, of really not just making a card, but also making a card that has a lot of homemade components to it. Like watercolor. And these are watercolor pencils by Prismacolor. I have an obsession with watercolor pencils, okay, and colored pencils in general. So I have a ton of sets of watercolor pencils, and I'm embarrassed that I do, but every time I buy a set, I I just hear about another one and that's supposedly the greatest thing ever and so then I really want to have that one and then it just goes on from there. I'm just I'm just crazy when it comes to crafting supplies. 
And I have to say, from the information I've gotten from other crafters, it seems like since nobody can ever seem like their their crafts are organized well enough, I think that you have the same problem I have, and that is that you buy so many crafts that you can never keep up with the organization of it because there's just so, so many of them. Oh, let me tell you a funny story. You know, my, my obsession with ribbon. Well, I decided that I was going to reorganize my ribbon. Well, when I reorganized my ribbon, of course, Joann's was having this sale on this ribbon rack is normally, I think, 30 or $40, and they were selling them for $10. And they're really nice wooden racks that hold a ton of rolls of ribbon. And the problem that I have with my ribbon is that I have so much ribbon, as you know, I have so much ribbon that I just can't, I was putting it in that purse thing that, you know, the thing that has the holes in it, it looks like a purse and, <clears throat> excuse me, it has holes so that you can pull the ribbon through the holes. Well, that all sounds well and good until you start looking at the amount of ribbon I had and then you realize that when you have that much ribbon you also have to take it off the rolls. So I took it off the rolls and then I couldn't get it in because there was just so much of it. So what I did yesterday was anything that still could be put back on a roll I or that I hadn't taken off a roll I put on my new rack and the things that were too far gone I put back in the purse but I got I really am organized with my ribbon right now okay right now yesterday there was a lady that was getting rid of a bunch of really beautiful sheer big ribbons and um that's my new obsession because my friend Linda gave me this piece of ribbon that I absolutely adore and I mean it was a big piece and I've used all of it and I'm still uh, craving more ribbon from her so or from that from that type of ribbon and so I decided that I don't have enough of those kind of ribbon <laughs> like I you know of course I have plenty of that kind of ribbon but I decided I didn't have enough so long story short so I um, bought oh I don't know 40 40 more skeins 25 I don't know a lot more ribbon that I didn't need but I have I'm excited because I can't wait to get it I've been using a lot of ribbon lately and so then that in my mind that justifies buying more ribbon if you don't know what I'm doing now this is a blender pen it's a Stampin Up blender pen but you can get blender pens from just about anywhere and uh, it, what it does is it, it, it liquefies the watercolor pencil. And it makes it a lot easier and faster. And all you do to clean it is that. And then you go on to the next color. So I'm excited because my girlfriend, I have two girlfriends that absolutely love snowmen. And I'm excited that I'm finally getting some of these cards done that I really that are special and important to me and that I that I don't want to just take two minutes to do you know your basic card I really want to make sure that they know how much I love them and how much that making a card for them was important to me that I wanted to make sure that the card would mean something to them as well this time of year we all have so many lists things that have to get done. It makes me nuts. I, I'm a list maker and I'm not just a list maker. I have to not just make the list, but I have to actually follow through and do the list. I've always been one of those people that if I make a list, I, I force myself to follow through and get that list done and or, and this is my new thing, or I lose the list and then I have to start over with a whole new list because I lost my list. Where we are right now is I've, I've done my Pico and you can see it's looking really cute and uh, our red is looking nice. I'm just going to put a little bit of green I think on the, the parts that obviously are green. My mother would be so proud because she loved, love, love glitter. I'm sure I've told you that story how she ruined her luggage that I bought her because she wanted to make sure she could find it when it came off that conveyor belt. 
So she glittered the crap out of it. She just she just um, squirted that it was back in the day when everything everybody was doing the puffy paint. She squirted that puffy paint like there was no tomorrow on it and it was the funniest thing because it was so ugly and she was so proud of herself because she knew that no one would ever uh, steal her luggage then. Ah, mothers. They're cuter than anything, aren't they? So, we're going to attach this to our card. I did stamp the sentiment inside. It said, every snowflake brings to mind how special you are. You're one of a kind. I think I'm just going to run my tape runner across this. Bella's here. And she's not a baby, but she thinks she is. She's a spoiled little dog. Little. She's not even little. She's a spoiled 90-pound dog. But she's uh, as close to a baby as I am. And she's adorable. How could I forget Ribbon? My most favorite part of the whole project, and I forgot to do it. I know you, the Ribbon Police, will be after me because I didn't not do that thing where you save it underneath. But you guys are going to have to let me let me let me off on a misdemeanor on this one because I forgot and didn't didn't do it when I should have. I think our card's looking cute. I like brick brack. Is that what they call that? Brick brack? Yeah, I think that is what they call it. Okay. So here is our card. I, as I said, I did not put a sentiment on the outside because I like the sentiment on the inside. I'd like to make my... Not a little, oh, there we go. A little bit tighter, but it was just fight me on that. Now it's better. And um, I was going to do a little bit more on it, but I, I hope that you got the idea of what masking is. It is a really great technique, especially when you are looking to do something that's very intricate. I'll bring my other card in too so you can see both of them. Get this out of the way. But I really think that if you make a mask, you should hold on to it because they really come in handy and keep them with the, the set of stamps that you're using and I think you'll really you'll really use them a lot. So there's our project. It was all about masking. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe and check back with me. We have more totally terrific tags and trimmings coming up. And this is really cool. I did a video on a uh, snow globe. I don't know if you remember that, but look back at that one. And I told you guys that th that the the thing that I use was from Stampin' Up! and it's been discontinued. But I gave you an idea of some other things you could use while well, I was at the Dollar Tree. I know, it's shocking. But I was at the Dollar Tree and I found those little cups, those little containers that you get ketchup in that have the lid. And I am going to try and do another snow globe with that specific thing so that you can see that those are accessible and they were I think 10 for a dollar comes with the lid comes with everything you need to make a snow globe so if you're in the market to make any snow globes I think you should be able to make one with that and I've got a really cool idea of how, of the one I'm going to make and I'm excited I might make that next it might be our next project so stay tuned for that and thanks again for watching and please Check back with me. Bye-bye.